Welcome back, everybody. It's Tuesday night and time for another episode of Tech Talk Live with Giles McCoy. And that's me. We've got a great show lined up for you tonight. We've got three things we're going to do. First, I'm going to welcome the esteemed Jack Sharkey back to the channel uh, from Kef. And, and, uh, and I always love it when, when Jack's on. He's always got cool new stuff to tell us about. And tonight is going to be uh, no exception to that. After we finish with that discussion, we're going to go through and announce the winner of the subwoofer from last week's contest. So if you've been out there waiting with bated breath to see if you're the lucky winner, I have a name on this piece of paper. Oh, oh you can't see it, can you? <laughs> Holy, I can see it right now. Uh, but somebody on there is going to be the, the, the recipient of that fine piece of gear. And then after that, we're going to do a quick recap of uh, Expona and some of the cool things we saw. And uh, we potentially will be joined by a number of people that I sent invites to, or if they don't like me, nobody will show up and it'll just be me. So who knows what's going to happen? The world is, you know, just, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. But to the main event, first thing, Jack, welcome to the show. Giles, thanks for having me. I, I look forward to um, being on your show. Every time I'm on it, I always have a blast. It's been a while, which can only mean one thing is I got a bunch of cool things to talk about. And and also, how have you been? Everything is good? Man, you know, things are things are wonderful. Uh, you know, the all the all the important stuff is in good in good shape, meaning that the family's healthy, um, everybody's doing well, kids are great in school, wife is okay, I'm still alive. So uh, you know, those those things are covered. And then beyond that, it's all gravy. How yes. about yourself? Same here. We had some delicious uh fajitas cooked outside Ooh, uh, tonight because nice. the weather is finally starting to shape up here in Nashville, Tennessee. So a uh, nice little dinner break before I came on the show. Life is really good. That's cool. Yeah, I had a, uh, I had a leftover burrito from lunch today as my dinner. So I think maybe your fajitas wins the 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 prize of best dinner from. I try to stay humble, but in this particular case, I do think I beat you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I'm right there with you. I I agree 100. Um, now. Let's, uh, let's let's lay the groundwork. I like to lay the groundwork for everyone. Uh, so for folks that haven't seen you before uh, here on the show, uh, could you take a few seconds and let people know who you are and who Kef is and why they should care? Okay, well, they should care if, they're, first of all, if they're watching the show, that means they're into this whole thing anyway, this audio video thing. So that would be the first step for, for caring. My name is, is Jack Sharkey and I'm a senior technical engineer at Kef America. So I'm based in Nashville, Tennessee, but our home office is in is in Marlboro, New Jersey. I've been in the audio business and in the digital world for a very long time, uh, and I've been with Kef now for 17 years. Um, I, which to me just speaks to how much I love the product and I love the company and the people that I work with and, and all. Uh, my job is basically uh, training. So I do training for our dealers and for our reps and for the public in general. I do uh, the blog and, and marketing and, and writing some of these things for, for new products and, and all of that. And lately, now that we're kind of back on the on the road, as it were, coming out of the last three or four years. Out of hibernation. Yeah, out of hibernation. So I'm getting, you know, getting out and, and meeting the, the public. Mostly I, I work with dealers and, and reps and things like that and do that kind of training. So yeah, that's me. That's my story. Kef has been around since 1961. It's a British company, kind of the um, the partners of fathers of that British sound, hi-fi sound. Um, Kef, there's a couple other companies that have been around for a long time that kind of developed that British hi-fi sound. Very uh, neutral, very revealing, very uh, mm -hmm. organic and natural sound. Um, yeah, and we have just an amazing bunch of new products that have, we've put out over the last couple of years. If you're not really familiar with us, everything from our meta material technology in, in our, our regular passive speakers. We have a whole wireless um set of products now mm -hmm. that will include the, the meta material. And tonight I'm here to talk about subwoofers for the most part, or, or maybe completely only about subwoofers because we just launched in February and March uh, a couple of new products and we've got some really exciting technology. And, and that's the thing. So really I'm talking about subwoofers right now. It's pretty much my whole thing. Man, I love it. I love it. And everybody knows that I love a good subwoofer and, and I'm pretty finicky about my subwoofers it is um, true i know you very well and you are a bit finicky which is also why i enjoy coming on the show and talking with you because 
you know, you got to get get got to get the Giles stamp of approval. On that, that that's too. right. That's right. I'm going to get a little assign a sign that I can hold up that says approved yeah. or denied, right? Yeah. And uh, that that'll be funny. Uh, now, before we dive off into that, though, I want to welcome everybody that's watching uh, to the channel to the show tonight. So, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I can see we've got a handful of our uh, our favorite viewers here with us that have made some comments. If you're out in the audience, I would love to hear where you're from. And, uh, and say hi and let us know if you know anything about Kef or not. If you have questions, uh, drop those in uh, to the comments and I will answer those uh, as best we can if we can get those up. Uh, if you are viewing via Instagram, I will do my best to see those comments. They are in a whole different window uh, because it's, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to deal uh, with Instagram. They don't really integrate in, but I've got you guys in here. And uh, I did see one comment come across from Digital Home Colorado. Uh, he says, Love me some Kef. Uh, he is a integrator here in the Colorado area, and uh, it does a lot of good work out here. Oh, that's um, fantastic. And, uh, he, that. is, he is a dealer in Longmont. So, okay. So if anybody's out here in, in Longmont, uh, that that might be your go-to. Uh, and, you know, I've actually, I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's a good guy. I've met once once before, I think. Really, really cool dude. And then outside of that, we've got uh, Bruce Reed coming in from uh, Syracuse. Welcome. Uh, Base Therapy. Kef is my favorite brand. He's like, but will they work with me? He's a he's an up and coming influencer, good guy. We've got Hi Fi Haven says running a pair of Kef Q three fifties, a Q two fifty C, and two pairs of Q one fifties in the system. As he's that he's watching this on right now, I so he gets that. to enjoy this in Kef living sound. Um, Michael S. <laughs> Okay, I, I have to try. I love I love the names that are a little more difficult for me. Uh, so that is a Staruz, Staruzkovich. Uh, that yeah, something like that. So Michael, welcome. Um, Aloha. Maybe he's out in Hawaii right now. Uh, he's been a Kef fan for thirty plus years. He's running a seven channel system with Q10s, reference one hundreds, and two KH two two zero five kits. He loves the Q imaging, don't we all? I mean. Yeah. We we certainly do. Double A is here with us, and uh, Hi Fi Haven, another local Coloradian, Coloridian, Coloradian, uh, co someone who lives in Colorado. He is here with us uh, <laughs> as well. Um, so, uh, like I said, if you have comments, please drop them in. And uh, oh, uh oh, Rogers here with us. Oregon currently in Cincinnati. Oh, that's where WKRP was, that, right? They, were they? That's yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, thanks for joining everybody. Uh, oh, there's there's more. I sorry, I, I can't get get to them all because we got to talk about this stuff. So, subwoofers. You guys have dropped a line of stuff for well, subwoofers, and they came out two months ago, three months ago. Well, we have the updated version of the, our cube series of subwoofers have been out for for a while now, but we've gone through a refresh with them, and now they're known as Cube M I E. And we have the 8-inch, the 10-inch, and the 12-inch. And for the first time, certainly in the, the almost two decades that I've been with KEF, we have now a 15-inch front-firing subwoofer. Now, the MIE stands for Music Integrity Engine, and it's our custom-made, in-house designed DSP. And one of nice. the things that we were talking in the, in the pre-show the future of subwoofer technology, I mean, at the end of the day, when you think about it, it's a speaker with an amplifier that plays low frequencies, right? Sure. So it's not necessarily new technology, the subwoofer itself, but some of the things that we've added to subwoofers, like our P-Flex surround, which gives you even greater excursion and allows and, and allows the driver to move even farther, therefore pushing more air with, with less distortion. Um, and our Unicor in the KC, KC62 with force canceling, right? So there's a lot of technology. But the future is what we're going to be doing with DSP, with digital signal processing. And, you, awesome. you know, for an example, you can get out of a 300 watt uh, class D amplifier in a, in a 12 inch driver or 15 inch driver by tweaking the DSP to bring down the distortion a little bit to, you know, um, handle uh, the we have our intelligent base extension. Mm -hmm. Right. To, right. To just extend things a little bit more. These little tiny tweaks are going to make subwoofer for performance just sort of explode in a whole new area here and the the cool thing is is you know the amplifiers and the drivers and the way things are, are built 
Uh, now we're into kind of fine tuning the DSP, which for a consumer is great because we're not going to be adding tons of new technology or new expense to things. Now it's really an engineering refinement. Uh, yeah. Right. It's a, it's an engineering process. And because of our in-house engineers and, and, and the guys that do our work for us the, or the folks that do our engineering for us, both uh, electrical and, and audio wise and physics wise and whatever, you know, we've got that kind of neat jump on things. So we're real excited about the performance of what we're being able to get from the cube subwoofers. That's cool. You know, so when I, when I first heard about it, you know, I got, I saw a press release come across, come across and, you know, I'm reading through, okay, Kef's got a refresh, you know, new subs. I'm, I'm thinking, okay, you know, probably more of the same. And, and I'm going down, I say, Oh, 15. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. they, they, they're okay. Something has changed because I, I don't recall a 15 ever. Right. No. Um, well, apparently back in the day, long before I was with Kef, there was a, there, there were subwoofers that big, obviously other companies have them, but it's been a, you know, a new technology from us. But you know, think about from the KC 62, which right. It's a, a six inch driver mm -hmm. in basically the size of a soccer ball all the way up to a 15 inch driver in, in a 20, uh, roughly a 20 inch cabinet. We've got the whole gamut, you know, whatever size you want, whatever performance level you've got, we've got a subwoofer for you now. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. Now I, I do want to take a moment and I want to uh, uh, give a shout out here to Richard. Uh, Richard is uh, Giles McCoy, YouTube royalty. He is a member of the channel. So whenever he's on, always have to shout it out. If anyone else is interested in joining the family, there's a link down below. Just hit join membership. Uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, okay, so now I've, I've got this uh, subwoofer in the other room. I'm going to do a full review of the Cube 15 MIE, uh, and uh, I've done the unboxing video. So if anyone wants to see what it's like to go through, see the packaging, take a look at the exterior finish, all those things, that's all up on the channel now. So they can go see all of those things. And uh, maybe we can take a, you know, kind of a quick talk from the outside to the inside and cover off on the subwoofer over the next 15 minutes. And I assume that to a certain degree, the, the things that are part of the 15 also apply to the smaller ones, just scale down, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and literally when we're talking scale, we're, we're talking size, you know, just the, the actual physical size of it. Uh, so we're, we're running, you know, the same DSP. Obviously, there's going to be tweaks in the DSP for a larger driver than a smaller driver. Uh, we have the room EQ, which is a really cool thing that we're able to do with DSP. So, you know, if you if you have your subwoofer close to a to a wall or to a corner, right, you do get some free bass response. Oh, yeah, you, you get that extra room gain. Yeah. But the price you pay for that is it gets a little muddy sometimes yeah. or it loses a little bit of clarity. So what we're able to do with the room EQ that we have is you can stick it in a corner and you can get that extra added SPL if you want it, but you can also tune it back down a little bit. You can, you can roll it off a little bit to uh, get rid of some of that muddiness or some of that, bo that boominess. So what I always tell folks is start with our, our in the room setting, which mm -hmm. is just basically, you know, standard full blown running the subwoofer. And then you can bring it back into corner or you can bring it back into wall, which just kind of cuts it down a little bit to help you really kind of fine tune. So yeah, from the eight all the way through the 15, they have all of these, they all have all of the same features on them. All right. So know. this is, yeah. So this is a, you know, kind of a quick view. And one of, one of the things I want to call out is, so there there is a departure here from what I consider to be kind of like your typical, you know, driver in a box with a plate amp on the back, right? So this is completely on the front rear and sides covered in cloth, right? There's a, a seam down the middle in the back where uh, where it attaches and you've got the plate amp in the back. Uh, but this this is completely wrap around, right? It, it's gorgeous. It looks really, really, really good. And then the top on this is a a, a very gloss black, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I was thinking if I had these, I would probably cut a glass plate to put on top of it and use these as end tables beside the the sofa in the living room for sure. for that kind of room. Obviously, in a in a theater, uh, there'd be a different setup. But I think that would just be kick butt. They look so nice and um, that's great to hear because one of the things that we you know really put a lot of effort into is the fact you know you've got to live with this it's it becomes part of your living room part of you know your everyday life so you know 
sure, you've got a 15 inch subwoofer or a 10 inch or a 12 inch subwoofer in your room, but let's make it work in the room and make it fit aesthetically as much as we can. So it's always a real joy to hear somebody acknowledge how nice these things look because they're, they're killer subwoofers, but they, they, they're not beastly looking. They're very nice looking pieces. Absolutely. So, so we're looking at the back here and I'm going to try and see if I can see some of this. So I'm getting up on my monitor. So, you know, if you kind of start at the bottom, you know, you got power and you've got your uh, Mickey Mouse kind of power plug coming in um, the, the ears. Uh, and then this is a, a high level speaker input, right? So mm -hmm. this looks like it's uh Oh, what, what are they called? Uh, the Eurocon. Yeah. So, yeah. so these guys, right. So you'd, you take the speaker wire and plug in, to uh to the plug and then that mm -hmm. plugs it makes it easier than trying to get into uh the the plate app itself and have little screws on the back or whatever right um, just use the eurocon plug it right in you're good to go phoenix yep. connectors some people call them yeah yeah phoenix connectors what i'm used to um then here this is okay this is something i wanted to ask about so you've got um uh, your RCA in. So if you look at the bottom, it says left and right, mm -hmm. but then above this guy, it says LFE. And then this red one says it's got some kind of connect. And I can't remember. And I remember when I unboxed it, I looked at it and I said, I don't really know what this thing means. Um, so any, any hints on what that is? Yeah. So smart connect is, is a really simple solution to a, a problem that a lot of people don't even maybe know that they have simple if you run one RCA, say, out of your LFE from your amplifier or whatnot, right. um, normally you would either just plug the, the single one in to the left or the right. It really doesn't make any difference. Or you would get a splitter. Yep, a wide adapter. Yep. So the problem is uh, if you just use one input, for example, you actually are cutting the volume of the input or the gain of the input in half. So what Smart Connect does is it sort of, it reads the room, if you will. It reads the temperature of what's coming in, the voltage. And it says, okay, we only have one connector here. So we're going to boost that gain. So basically you're at the same level of gain that you would be had you jumped it or if, oh. you, had, if you had both coming in. So it's a neat little way to save you some, some volume and some help with your gain without having to get involved in jumpers and things like that. Now, as far as the 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 masking or the the silk screen for LFE or Smart Connect, it doesn't matter. It's a convenience thing, and you know most oh, okay. people are going to plug the LFE into the left anyway. Um, so we just we just stuck with that nomenclature. But because of Smart Connect, it really doesn't matter. You can go either way with just one or two, whatever you want to work with. I'm with you. That no, that makes a lot of sense, and that clear clarification is super useful. Okay, so now when we come up to the top, we've got. Uh, uh, this little square four pin, is that like for firmware reprogramming or something like that? Nope. Or what is Way it? Yeah. cooler than that. So tell it's, me, let's, let's talk about that. All right. So it's for our KW01 wire. Or let me let me say that again more fluently. Our KW1 wireless subwoofer kit. Gotcha. So basically, you're going to take the, the transmitter and put it onto the back of your receiver, or your, your AVR, whatever it happens to be. You grab some power through a USB cable. Um, these are the receiver and the transmitter are factory paired. So they have their own little private network that they're gonna be on, turn them on, they light up, they go. Uh, and then you're gonna take the, the receiver, make sure I didn't misspeak, the transmitter goes on the AVR. Is that what I said, Giles? It, well, that's, yeah. that's what you said. <laughs> Absolutely. Change, change the past. Doesn't matter. That's what it was. Right. And then the receiver, um, you just could take those two screws out. You plug it directly into the back there. It's going to grab power. Um, and then it's also going to grab the signal from the transmitter. And boom, now you can move the subwoofer on the other side of the room with no wires. We, we did a really cool setup just last month for some trainings that we did. And we had two Cube 12s in a, in a Q. Uh, series theater that we built with 950s and 750s. And Ooh, up nice. front, we had MIEs. And in the back, we had two 12s. We used the KW1 subwoofer kit to pair one of them. And then what we did is we opened another package and just took the receiver out of it for the other pair, uh, you know, for the other subwoofer. They paired automatically after a couple of seconds. And boom, we had these two beautiful subwoofers in the rear channel now with no cable. So that's what that little square four pin thing is for. That's that's awesome. But I think the the really cool thing there is that you can use one transmitter and two receivers. And, and if you wanted to, could you do it with more than two? 
you know, you start getting into some yeah. latency issues and yeah, things I mean, at that point. You know, to be honest, I, I would be all for, for trying it. But, you know, the the um, the the limit of what we're comfortable telling you to go ahead and do is, is with two. Yeah, well, for my use cases, that would be perfect in any event. So that's exactly that's really super outstanding. OK, um, all right. So if, if we move on, then right here. OK, I am really getting up on this thing. Is, is that uh, like a 12 volt trigger? Maybe I can't tell. You know what? I have to just. Yeah, I can't I can't really see. Um, I just want to so make sure I know where you're at. A little, yeah, uh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see 12 volt. We're good there. Trigger. Yeah, and then we have a mode which is uh, you can select 12 volt or auto power on or just turned on, right? Three uh, different ways to power on, which is super mm -hmm. convenient. Then we've got uh, phase zero or 180 degrees, right? And then, okay. uh, then we, we get to some cool stuff. So, I'm um, well, let's let's talk about these two kind of pedestrian things you got a volume knob, yay, and you've got crossover. Okay, so th those are common, but then this EQ. Uh, switch right here now that's going to get into a little more of the magic so you could talk uh can you talk a little bit about that for us absolutely so the first thing is go back to the volume knob we did a really cool thing with the volume is it's oh, okay it's not linear right it's exponential it's algorithmic so mm -hmm. it actually will adjust the volume exactly how we hear bass and and the slope so it's it, it's going to be you know bigger moves and then smaller moves as you as you go through the cycle um and when you're dialing in a subwoofer it really is an amazing help. Uh, we have that. I use KF92s awesome. in, in my in my system, and between you know the LFE setting on the on the AVR and stuff, I just couldn't get it exactly where I wanted it. But because these the the, the taunts on the volume are not linear, like I was able to really help fine tune that in. So I just wanted to throw that out there because it's something I think is totally cool. That is cool. I didn't know that. That's nice. Yeah. Right. And so now the, the EQ is something I had mentioned earlier. That's the room EQ. And you got the three settings, which is standard in your room, which is the, you know, the basic way the sub was designed to work. Right. You want to call it that. And then you have the corner, which is going to give you a little bit of a roll off um it's starting you know at about 90 or 100 hertz or thereabouts it's just going to kind of roll it off gently to cut back on that extra uh room gain that boundary gain that you get from subs that we you know, from walls that we talk about and then of course if you put your sub in a corner that's twice as much now you know the the conventional wisdom is put it in a corner get more base and as we mentioned before that's good except for the fact you put it in a corner you get more base you also get more mud so what this does is it helps you kind of fine tune that sub to bring it in exactly to where you want it, uh, both with the volume knob and with the room EQ. That that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share this back out real quick, and uh, so I just wanted to run through this list of features, um, just to make sure that. Uh, well, look at this. That's beautiful. What a gorgeous set of speakers. That, that's that's nice. Um, all right, so we, we talked about the MIE, and that's your uh, DSP engine, right? Um, right. Okay, and I like that. The IBX Intelligent Base Extension provides even deeper. I like it, deeper and precise base. I love we, it. Right, deeper. Who doesn't want deeper and more precise base? I, I agree. Everybody wants it. So we're, it looks like we're working with a 300-watt Class D RMS amplifier. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's a, a, a good shot of the relative size of the speakers, right? So you got your 15. Oh, and just so people know, this is sealed. And for yes. me, that's the way I, I just, I love a sealed subwoofer. Yep. Um, and for, for a number of reasons, right? Um, you know, if you're chasing after decibels and you're going to have one sub, okay, maybe you want to go ported. But, you know, if you're really after what I consider to be kind of the 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 pinnacle of of bass performance and sound you know it, it's really sealed as the way to go and that's that's what i've done in my rooms so Quick, i really appreciate that also, yeah go ahead sorry well yeah and then i'm gonna i'm gonna jump ahead on on you just a little bit yeah. remind me to talk about our kc92 and getting increased spl out of that because i've got since you touched on it i want to just drop that little bit of a tease while we're finishing up with the mies yeah absolutely you. Uh, yeah, right, because the, the chase is about SPL or about volume, decibels, but, you know, we want to re retain as much accuracy as we possibly can. So I'm all with you on the on the sealed. Plus, the cool thing about a seal is you, if you if you need it, if you have um, just built yourself an amazing cabinet or something and you want to put the sub in there, you can actually do that. Yeah. Um, and it's not going to cause your problem. 
Yeah, that's awesome. That's very cool. Very cool. Um, and, and so you can see the 15, 12, 10, and 8. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, and this is a good shot of the wireless unit. There you correct? go. Yep, that's yeah, the that's, receiver. That's, that's, that's the receiver. That's pretty darn slick. I like that. Um, and then these are the things that we covered off on. We've got the uh, the Kev Smart connector and the speaker level inputs, the three uh, EQ room positions, the, the power uh, options, which are great. You can see the different sizes here, and uh, this I think this is important, right? So you, you know this 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 bad boy is uh, you know pretty linear all the way down to twenty hertz. And yeah, that, that's a big deal. I mean that's right. that's good stuff. I mean I, I I like that a lot. And then as you go smaller, of course you got less uh, less moving cone area, and so the the low end on it rolls up just a little bit, which is to be expected. Um, you know, one hundred sixteen max uh, decibels of max SPL rocking and then here's here's a picture of all the brothers and sisters there's the family the brady bunch as it were or the kef subwoofer bunch as it is yeah so we got the 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 kc 92 here 92 and the 62 yep and then we've got the four that we just talked about and uh and then two uh, that maybe briefly you can just touch on for a second to tell people what these these are Right, so the reference eight is where your cursor is right yep. now. So that's going to be the same fit and finish as a reference speaker. If you're, if, you know, if you're doing reference and as a, that same um, hand built sort of a deal with yep. it. Um, and then on the left, as we move over, that little thin guy is actually probably one of my all time favorite Kef products, and and it doesn't get the love that I think this thing should. Simple fact of the matter is. This is about 14 or 15 years old as, a, as an active product. No changes. Wow. It's our P2 subwoofer, and it's just a little thin guy. If you want to have something under your desk or, you, you know, you just want something in your apartment that's not going to, you know, wake the, the neighbors up or cause a bunch of problems, but give you just that little bit of edge on the bottom that you want to get. Uh, the T2 is a great little tool for that. It's just a small, quick, accurate subwoofer. Uh, I, I know a guy that actually has one and put it under, he laid it down and put it under his couch, Nice, um, which is kind of, you know, that's a great way to use it, but it just goes to show you it's small enough to be able to do that. So yeah, T2, I got to show some love because it's just been around for so long and it's a workhorse. That that's awesome. Okay. I, I think maybe now we should talk uh, about the, uh, the, the, the SPL deal that you had mentioned just before uh -huh. on the KC92. Right. So let's talk well, about that. Subwoofers are, boy, a lot of people just, they, they argue about them, they debate about them. There's a lot of misinformation about subwoofers and, you know, it's, it's just kind of all over the map, but there's two things you always want to be concerned with, with a subwoofer is obviously the loudness, you know, how, yeah. how much are we going to get? How much boom are we going to get from, from our subwoofer? And then once we start, you know, drilling down, we go past the boom a little bit. So, okay, we, we have a subwoofer that's loud and makes boom, but how accurate is it? And there's, you know, a misconception that when you get below, you know, 32 hertz or thereabouts, it all kind of sounds the same. That's not true. Sound is sound, right? That's right. So you want it to be as accurate as you can all the way down till it's, till it, you know, it's beyond its lower limit. Um, and there's really, there's no such thing as a movie subwoofer or music subwoofer. There's just a speaker that makes low frequencies, right? Right. So, okay, that's all great, but we still like to play them loud. KC92, we have now offered a stacking kit. So, what? Yeah, I am not kidding you, Giles. And you notice I didn't say anything to you about this in pre-show. Uh-uh, no, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, stack yeah so 200 bucks, you can get a stacking kit, and you can take two of those bad boys and stack them up against each other, or three if you what? want to do that. Yep. Can I get two kits and do six? You can do get you can do well. You get one kit is going to stack two. You get another kit, you stack three, and then for your, for your your fourth, fifth, and sixth KC ninety twos on the other side, you get two more stacking kits, and you're ready to go. But the thing is, um, the the increase in SPL is it's it's out of this world. I mean, it, it'll go. I, I'm not going to take a lot of time to to shoot for the numbers right now, and I apologize. I probably should have those numbers right in front of me. But I don't. Um, but you can, you know, you're going to go from 106 dB to 112 dB, from 112 yeah. to 118 dB. If you think about it, when you go to a show in a live theater, they're stacking, they're stacking those. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Because it couples the sound. 
Mm -hmm. And so what you wind up getting is instead of, you know, two separate subwoofers, you stack them up, you're getting one even bigger subwoofer. Yeah. So for, for you folks out there who are after the boom and the accuracy, stack your KC 92s and you're, you're good to go. And, and a KC 92 is dual nines, right? Dual nines in a force canceling. Yeah. Yeah. So that, if you did three of them, that's six nines. And yeah. if you get six of them, that's 12 nines. You're moving a lot um, of air in your room. Yeah. You know, that's that's like four eighteens or something. Yeah, you're easily in the 122, 124 decibel, you yeah. know, uh, which now, do I recommend uh, listening at that loud? I personally don't. You do your own thing. But here's the beautiful thing about it. If you can do 124, imagine what you're doing with ease at 106 or 102 or 99 decibels. And that's the thing is you've got all this headroom now um, to, you know, you're not going to approach kind of distortion levels or anything like that. So if you're just listening at regular room volumes or even heightened room volumes, you're going to be able to crush it with these things. It's amazing. That's, that's, that's awesome. Wow. Okay. Super excited. Okay. So we, Unfortunately, you're coming to the end of our time here. Um, is there anything else that you want to get out there about the man that the stacking kits for those is out that that's cool. I mean, I know there's some other stackable brands and subs out there, but I can't wait to see somebody do six of these things. Right. Right. So, and you know, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna that's my mic drop moment. I'm gonna leave it right there, Giles, and certainly and go with the stacking kit. I'm and you know, just thanks so much for for the in-depth look at the, at the cube MIEs and then being able to talk about the, the stacking kit, man, I, it's, it's a great way to end the show is right there. I love it. Agreed. So if anybody's interested and needs more information, I'll have a link down to the Kef website below. You can always send questions my way and I can help you get those to the right direction if I don't know the answer, but you know, hopefully I will and I can just help you out directly. Um, and uh, you know, if you, if as you need child, purchase, if you've got something, send it my way and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. That's awesome. All right. So Jack, uh, you know, again, thank you so much for joining and, and I, I really appreciate it. It's been, a thanks pleasure. so much for having me, buddy. I really appreciate it. I appreciate what you do and I can't wait to see you the next time. Sounds good. All right. Take care, sir. See ya. Bye-bye. All right, folks. So that is all about the new Kef cube subwoofers and the KC 92, which who knew is now stackable. And I can't wait to see somebody do a six stack of these. That's going to be outrageous. All right. Now we're going to move on to the second half of the show. And I've invited a number of people, people to come in and talk a little bit about Axpona. Now, before I bring them in and I see a whole bunch of folks in the green room back there. So thanks for being patient and waiting. Um, I, I did want to go ahead and announce the winner of the SVS subwoofer. Uh, it's a SB1000, if I remember correctly, and this was uh, given away or uh, announced on the show last week. Everybody had everybody that watched that knew about it. See, if you don't watch, you might miss out on a chance to have a really good shot at winning some really good gear, right? Because, you know, I think we only had like, 30 entrants for the for the subwoofer. So 130 is not bad for a, a nice piece of gear. Anyway, the winner um, is Andre Emilson or Emilson. Um, if this is you, uh, make sure you reach out and contact me. I've got my email and uh, I will uh, I will be certifying the winner. So, uh, you know, I, I'll probably get six people right and say, hi, that's me. <laughs> but we'll, we'll figure out who, you know, will the real uh, Andre, please stand up and uh, and we'll get that all taken care of uh, and, and and good to go. So congratulations to Andre. And with that, now we're going to move to the last segment. I'm going to start bringing some folks in and I hopefully I think we'll have some more people join too. Uh, but I've got four esteemed guests that are ready to uh, join in and chat with us. That's right, DJ. Even I you, <laughs> esteemed. That's, esteemed. You knew you were going to me. Of, I was of like, course, there's got to be a fifth in here because you said four esteemed guests. Oh, I, oh, uh, I was counting Jack. He's no longer with us. Okay, so now we have three. Uh, there you um, go. But but if we had a lobster that was being cooked, that could be an esteemed guest. It'd be a oh, <laughs> ah, I'm so funny. Um, but uh, let's do something to raise a god. What have I done? Um, so let's uh, let's go around and uh, let's start with Scotty. Scotty, could you please uh, let people know who you are and why they should care? All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the invite, Giles. Uh, my name is Scott Lylander, and I am at Audio Acoustic Engineering. We're always talking about what makes your sound better. What can you do? What are the technical details of what's going on? And 
I got the opportunity to hang out at Expona with many of these people here. So I can't wait to share that with you all tonight. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you for joining. Um, next up for bids, Ray at Hi-Fi Turtle, the one and only. What's up, everyone? Hi-Fi Turtle, the only and leading adjacent reptile adjacent Hi-Fi page on the internet. <laughs> and we're here with the boys. And we're going right. to review some Expona. Uh, Daniel, just in case he didn't show up, you know, he he's making a, a guest appearance here in, in this uh, background. Um, but my, my, <laughs> oh, my I see head, him back there. Look my, at that. My, my, head, my, head will, my head will cover him up for now. That, that's hilarious. That's awesome. Cool. Um, and DJ, you're next. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, DJ, Brightside Home Theater Podcast, a uh, podcast dedicated to the experiences, the sights, the sounds, and the scenes. Oh, man, you that's sound so good, the, too. It's probably the calmest I've ever said that, Giles. Oh man, you just you're, you're I mean, you just got that silky smooth. I'm not oh. are you kidding me? Oh, oh it's it's so good. I love frog it. Frog in my throat, buddy. I've been talking a lot. Uh yeah, he he so everybody, um, please bow your heads for a moment for DJ because he did a two hour stream earlier today on his channel, right? Three hour, uh, I don't know. When he starts, no, it's like it just never a little over two. Yeah, a little over two earlier. Right on. Cool. Yeah, it's starting yeah. to sound a little bit like Barry White. That's that's all good. But thank you for joining <laughs> uh, with us uh, this evening. And Thanks then, for the uh, yeah, I know. Great to be here with everybody. This is awesome. Woohoo! So and cool. last but not least, the man who's on the clock right now, as we speak, working In double making, shift, <laughs> making that money double. Oh, and he's representing his boys uh, with his shirt. Yep, that's right. Uh, we got Cable. Daniel Base Therapy. I so let everybody know who you are and why they should care. Uh, I do a lot of content on Instagram, on YouTube. I've been blowing up lately. And companies want me, you know. I'm just cool like that. No, I just play. Oh, but, yeah. and he's so <laughs> humble. The, the humble brag. The 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 most humble of all. All right. Um, so this is uh, to talk about Expona. And, uh, you know, we're going to go about half an hour. So I'm not, you know, we're not going to go too long tonight. Um, I know we're all we're all working and every, I'm sure everybody's like editing content like crazy. And I, you know, I was in the office all day today, so I got to edit all night long. Uh, but I do want to ask a few questions and, uh, and and get a few answers. So, I, you know, let's let's go over the highs and lows of the show. And, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not going to ask what's the best to show. But what <laughs> was your favorite thing that you saw? And I'll go back in that same order, Scotty. So I'm going to put you on uh, on notice here first. What? You know, for from all the stuff that you got a chance to hang out and check out, what was the coolest thing to you? What did you like? It, it was definitely the Joseph Audio system with uh, with the Doshi Doshi Labs front end and Jay Sakura turntable. Uh, that was only the first time I heard the song Queen Mary out of the <laughs> probably fifty five times I heard it, and I was <laughs> loving that song. And I don't know. There, look, there could be two things about that system. One, the gear, and two, the person who set it up or the team that set it up. But it, it for me, was the best sounding of the show. That's all. You know, I, I didn't actually see that one myself and hear it, so I missed, I completely missed out on it. Um, what, what did everybody else think? Was, was that a good one? Uh, we didn't go, me and Ray. I don't know. If I, I, pop, I popped in uh, what, what Daniel when you were at a different event. I popped into the, okay. the Joseph Audio room, and I, I mean, I love the combination of Joseph Audio and, and Doshi Audio. That's always a highlight for me. So I, I really, I really enjoyed that room for sure. Cool. Unfortunately, other people wanted me, and that was crazy. This year was crazy. So I wish I went to that room though, because everybody was saying it, it sounded amazing, and last year it sounded amazing too. So that, that's great. That's great. What about you, Ray? Uh, anything uh, that you saw that kind of floated your boat? Oh, there was there were so many things, and I, I think you know one of the, the things that gets overlooked is definitely all the personal connections. You know, all the all the fun times. Like, definitely, probably like my highlights that I, I'm telling people are the interactions that I had with people. You know, in the after parties at the industry mixer, uh, things of that nature. Uh, I'm hap really happy to see you know Daniel as he kind of let in with his humble brag. You know, we've been going to the exponent together for three years now, and you know this year. I mean, he was, he was the man, like everyone wanted to talk to him. Everyone wanted to see him. Everyone wanted him to come to the, their room. Hard work, work guys. Work with them. So, you know, I, I'm really proud of my boy for, uh, you know, sticking with it. And uh, it's really cool to see him, you know, 
be so popular at the show. And then me just being confused for the cameraman <laughs> um, so many times <laughs> asking. They're like, oh, so, man, guys, they're like, oh, but, yeah, I know. They're like, are you are being being forgotten by brands that I have been very yeah. loyal to in the past? Um, no names. I know. Okay, no I'll names take mentioned. the cake, man. They take okay, the cake. All right. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take the cake. <laughs> the cake. I said, this is why I switched to Dine Audio. Oh, oh gosh. Shots oh, fired. Man. Um, well, I, I didn't go to the Dine Audio room, but I did go to the Focal room. I got to represent my Focal love. Mm. I, I, I completely love those guys. All right, DJ, you're next. What uh, What did you see that you were like, oh, snap? Man, it's got to be the, uh, well, you got the Pro Listen room, but couple mm. that with the new SVS uh, evolution mm -hmm. pinnacles and i've said it i said it on my show earlier i said it on my show yesterday i'm like D yeah are uh, the pro listens better yep but not that much better not 17 grand or whatever it is difference it's like svs is just i don't i know you guys heard i know you heard him giles i know oh like, yeah I'm, I'm looking at everybody nod <laughs> like yep it's like what they did there especially with those pinnacles those it's insane and yeah between the insane. between the pair of them you got eight eights yeah right dropping some some bass for you yeah but it's in then but you're also talking it's the back working so that mm -hmm. when i heard that explanation from i think it was larry in the titan room in the home theater room and it's like they did that for not only for sound purposes but it also what it did for the cabinet so the engineering of the actual cabinet is now stabilized because of that design. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, holy crap. <laughs> like, like this, the attention to details I thought was, was really a great cool. Role. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's outstanding. Yeah. yeah. And then for, for everybody out there that's watching, you know, feel free, call out. If you, if you were at the show, um, you know, if you saw something that you liked, um, you, you let me, let me know. So, you know, for example, uh, Pong says that he fell for the totem fire V twos, um, he loved the Boris and X1, uh, but the totems, and and I, I heard the totems too, and the totems were ridiculously good. I yeah, they were, they were yeah. I was super super happy with the totems. But what yeah, about like you, Daniel? Man, I gotta give a shout out to my boy Vinny Rossi first because if it wasn't for him, uh, there would be no exponent for me this year. So this guy is amazing, and his products speak for themselves. You know. You walk in there, you listen, you look. They're perfect looking and perfect sounding. If I could, like, afford this level of gear, I, I was definitely going to buy Vinny Rossi. And I think his room, especially with KLN and uh, with the YG, those rooms sounded perfect. There's nothing to complain there. And they dealt with, like, the hotel pretty well, the hotel rooms. And I stayed in there, and I was happy, you know. I was, I was like, yep, this sounds perfect to me, and I love these rooms. And then... Another room that I got to give a shout out to is my boys over at Astalon. That room is always amazing. <laughs> you can't make an Astalon sound bad, you know. But uh, yeah, I had a ton of fun over there too. <laughs> and yeah, this is basically for me, Vinny Rossi and Astalon. Those rooms are That's perfect. That's Daniel, awesome. Daniel was there all three days at Astalon. Yeah. But they were giving out. Were, no, Ray. They were giving out free drinks. <laughs> I don't drink, guys. Only water. And. You had to see Alfred, man, with his little sunglasses. Oh yeah, that Alfred with the sunglasses. Vibrant. Yeah, he was, he was, he was a, he was a player. He's a player. Uh, He's yeah, funny. Alfred, Al, Alfred had that. Cool. Era. Yeah, he had that swag for sure. That's cool. Yeah, a few standouts for me, stuff that I liked. Um, you know that that you know I, I'm sure everybody has opinions, but you know I, I liked all the Focal stuff. I always do. You know, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of the brand. I, I really enjoy it. Um, you know the. Uh, uh, I can't remember the the name. The Alta Audio, the new ones, the Aphrodites. Uh, those are pretty pretty crazy. I enjoyed those quite a bit. Um, I really like the uh, the Stark Sound P3 Class A amplifier. I thought that thing was pretty baller, particularly for the money. Um, it, you know, it does it does a lot of work uh, at that price point. Oh gosh, I'm trying to think. Did anything? I mean, you know, all the other stuff is all like Audio Group Denmark. I you know I always love all their stuff and all the different brands and that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I got to drop by the AV luxury group rooms and I thought those were all really, really good. And, uh, the, uh, uh, oh, come on, uh, Ray, you know, the one that looks like a beer stein handle, uh, oh, the bays. Yeah. The bays. Thank you. So those are pretty cool. Um, I don't, I don't think they've sounded the best that I've ever heard them here. Um, I actually heard them in Vegas and they were 
amazing. So I think uh, for folks that heard those that, you know, they get even better. So a lot, a lot of stuff I liked, um, but uh, you know, those, those are just, I, I guess my, my proclivities. Um, all right. Now I want to flip this around and we can all make enemies at this point, but what oh were the things that you didn't like at the show? So what, what, was, what was something you're all like, hmm, and I've, I've got a, I know exactly what I'm going to say. There, there was something that I was very disappointed oh. about there. So I'm bright Scotty, side and I know what I'm going to say. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> Scotty, what, what about you? Anything that you were just like, eh, I'm just disappointed. You know, there was a lot of full range drivers that just weren't doing it for me. And there were mm-hmm. a lot of open baffle speakers that just weren't doing it. Uh, at Pacific audio fest last year, I thought there were a ton of open baffles that were working really well. I got to listen to the new Clayton Shaw Labs. I'm like, yeah, okay, all right. You know, maybe it was a song, maybe it was the track, maybe it was a setup, but you know, there was very few of those types of gear that weren't doing it for me. Now, shout out to the Cube Audio full range. That was really great. Oh, is that the ones that, that are the big, huge kind of ones? That yeah, yellow wolf or kind of, yeah, yellow or yeah. orangish with the yeah. black with box. The big, yeah. With the big, the, yeah, like black box. cone phase plug in the middle. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Right on. What about you, Ray? I, I have to, I have to agree there. I will, I will say, I was there was a lot of hype around the like the Clayton Shaw and, and the Mako or the Mako uh, open baffle speakers, and I think that you know that's kind of come up with like the Pure Audio project and things of that nature. And I, I, I was kind of just like, that's just okay, or you know, I can't, I can think of something that's that's better for that price. Um, the Griffin room for, for me, I, I mean, it was good for sure, but when you factor in that it's well over a hundred thousand dollars, I think there was some better stuff there. Uh, maybe their upper echelon, you know, amplifiers that they don't show off or don't, you know, have plugged in are, are more their, their bread and butter, but right. you know, that's not what they chose to show off. So I hear you, uh, DJ, you, you, you were like, I know exactly what I'm going to say. Uh, I mean, this is the audiophile expo of North America, right? Mm -hmm. So these are all audiophile experts. And uh, a couple of bass-hungry rooms, uh, and they got, uh, like, eggshell foam room treatments doing (laughs) absolutely nothing on the wall, which to me is like, what are you... Like, I said it earlier, I'm like, "That's, that's worse than doing nothing. Because that to me is like you're saying, I don't even know what anything does. And this is, mm-hmm. you're an expert in the industry. And it's, I mean, everybody's not, you know what rooms these were. I don't want to shout them. I did on my show, but I'm like, you, what are you doing? That's, that's an, to me, that's embarrassing because we, as you know, we're trying to get the, like room treatments are so important for every room in this place. We all come home and go, eh, they didn't like i think daniel you said earlier like dino was it daniel that said it? like the dino room and like i have one of my listeners didn't like it last year and he liked it this year so it's so room dependent and it's so important and you go into these rooms that are supposed to be base hungry and they have diffuser what the <laughs> heck is a diffuser doing on the back wall in a base room that's doing nothing it's like it's just, it was just embarrassing i was like walked in i was like are you kidding me i go when a donkey like me walks in and i'm the smartest one in the room you're screwed uh-oh uh-oh I, <laughs> I dj's like, dj's just unload i will, I will say I, I wasn't i was impressed if a lot of brands did bring pretty yes. proper treatment this year like yeah. typically you see maybe a handful of rooms that actually have a panel or two in there yeah but there were a lot of rooms this year that had like full on bass traps in their room and a lot of a couple panels that they had assembled. So I gotta give props to that. And you know yeah. what I noticed though is the ones that did that were were playing female vocals, they're playing the higher. So they're controlling that so that you can enjoy the higher frequencies without it being muddied. Right. But then in the bass rooms, I don't think they know how to control bass. And they were just like boom, 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 boom. it was, I didn't like it. But you're right. There was the rooms that did have it. You were like, "Oh wow, okay, you know what you're doing." That mm-hmm. was nice. Yeah, Disappointing I, I when you see that people don't know what they're doing and they're the experts. Right on, Daniel. Come on now. I know you're opinionated. Uh, I'm gonna stay quiet for this one because the room that I did not like was they they worked together with the brand I work with, 
and I was I was not impressed, man. That room was not nothing special, you know. And I, I'm not gonna say anything because I don't want to like come after brand. You know, it could be the hotel room, it could be a bunch of other factors, but yeah, that room was just. Uh, and I think my system that cost like a fourth of that system destroyed it by a mile, you know, but that's, that's, that's all I'm going to say. I have to so, be more professional these days. <laughs> so I have too much, so you're, can, you're, too much power. Your take home then is you were just disappointed at what your, your expectations were not met by some brands that should yeah. be able to meet your expectations. Yes. Right, Even well, in a hotel room, you know, because there was cheaper gear that they sounded way better, you know, and the people running the higher end rooms were way cooler than the people running the lower end rooms as well, which I found weird, you know, it's like your product don't cost like 20,000. The rooms with like the million dollar products, the guys were like so welcoming and like the best people ever. And then you walk into these small, smaller brands and they're such dicks, you know. It's like, why is a dick? Like, people are trying to know your brand and you're, like, making it harder, you know? So that's another thing, too. But that's so it. <laughs> for, for me, last year, there was a tool that that opened my eyes to audiophilia in a way that it had never been opened before. It really expanded my horizons, and uh, and, and it changed the way that I completely look at hi-fi. And this year, I was expecting to have that experience again, but they they weren't at the show. And Ray knows who I'm talking about. He's my list. It was it was two years ago, by the way. Well, two, uh, my bad. Yeah. Two years ago. So double disappointment because the Tiger Fox. Oh my gosh! She said the <laughs> brand <laughs> is is not there. I'll, although they somebody, made a cameo, though, didn't they have some business cards that you they found? Had, they had business, and I kept it for a while. Um, by a while, I mean, till Monday, I guess. Um, and I don't know what I did with it, but I, yeah, I, gosh, I wanted the tiger there. That would have been the most fun room of all of them. Not for there, a good reason, but it would have been yeah. the most fun. That, that was probably the <laughs> one thing that I, I was a little, a little sad about this year is, you know, every year I feel like there's at least one or two brands that are just totally off the wall. And and this year I didn't feel like there was any really like off the wall things. The, there the there was off, one. The there only off one. the wall thing I saw was Theoretica Analytica, which yeah. they have are they make a digital processor uh, that has a webcam on it, and the webcam uh, tracks, tracks your, your head. He- yeah tracks your head and like does some DSP to adjust for the like your listening position. Now I didn't get to sit in the sweet spot, so I, I don't want to say too much about like what I heard. Uh, but I know that when they were in there, they did calibrate it and their calibration looks like just a pair of like, uh, like Jaybird earbuds. Really? Um, What's yeah, it a Delta airplane, you know, y- y- not, not that cheap, but you know, just like, a, just like a, a regular <laughs> pair of earbuds. And then they run like a, just a frequency sweep. And then it just goes. I was holding and myself and then, not and then, to and laugh here, so hard. System calibrated. <laughs> 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 bro when that thing said that i looked at ray and i was like <laughs> after, that, after after it said that Breathe. i was i was i was laughing i was like i gotta leave yeah i was like i'm, <laughs> I'm done <laughs> but that that was a curiosity for sure i kind of i kind of wish that i got in calibrated but at the same time i was like i don't want to put those earbuds in my ear i'm not they that did not swap the the rubber parts i don't i don't, just know how, putting... I don't know how well they were cleaning those tips so the, yeah the, i'm sure the tip is not cleaned at all Oh, you're yeah anyway i'll pass on from from yeah. the Joe gg's Sogo reaction was my reaction yeah <laughs> yeah um, um so in that vein also of what ray was saying of like the really esoteric kind of stuff other than esoteric um do you remember the the speaker it was like the uh, like a garbage can that had like a whole bunch of little speakers and then like a big 18 in the middle of it or yeah, something yeah yeah all the, the wires bomb. looked like they were solid, the bomb, solid yeah. the, and it had the chewing bomb. gum on it that i would love to have seen that again that Same. that that was awesome although i thought that thing sounded horrible they, they were they had a room last year at expona but they didn't, they didn't show, show. Up. and then yeah. this year they had nothing so i think i don't know what happened to the brand but the yeah. guy that run the room was super cool He's like super. He was, oh, the guy cool. was the guy was totally cool, but man, that speaker. Yeah, it was weird. But hard yeah. pass. You know, there were a couple of rooms that nobody showed up for, like uh, um, that brand from Mexico, 
uh, Margulis. Yeah, Margulis. Their room. Oh, was I showed cool. up, bro. I loved their rooms. The, w- this time when I went, every time I went by there, it was closed, and you know you couldn't get in. So, uh, and that was on the seventh floor, across with all the AV luxury stuff. And there, yeah, I, I think we went. We were in that room. Yeah. So it was open for some time then. Yeah, it yeah. was open at some point. Yeah. Right on. Um, so Suat. Oh, Suat. Suat. This is uh, <laughs> this is my new guy. Suat the cop. Oh. He speaks yeah. Thai. So I Let's can, I can talk about with, that. Him, with the with what? the Thai-ness. Um it, did we already trash the giant horns room that sounded terribly flat? I listened to a four million dollar system and I um, hated it. <laughs> I, I will say that the 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 four million dollar system. I think it's going to be very heavily dependent on when you were there because I'm. I swear to God, we were at the. Uh, we went there because we heard them like playing Martin Garrix at like astronomical SPLs. Oh wow! Um, so we and went one of down the subs blew. And like- it was. It sounded so good until like the last thirty seconds of that song, and then the, you saw the sub just. Like it disconnected from the surround. The cone and the surround were like, yeah, no, laughing so, each other. Yeah. So it, I think it depends what time you saw that room because if you saw it after Saturday morning, it was not playing at full capacity. And just the speakers are one point eight million dollars with the subwoofers or something crazy like that. Just the speakers. <sighs> yeah. I just the CD yeah. is forty grand. I, I was looking at prices for me to upload the video, and I was like, "The CD player kind of made in China." I took a, I took a I picture know. of it, and I was like, "That looks like something from like a dim sum shop." Like, you know, look oh, fancy, you're, you're talking my language now. Dim sum CD player. I'm I'm okay with that. Um, yeah. So so what says it was. Uh, yeah, it was cool to see visually, but but that's about that's about it. Um, uh, did anybody hear the uh, treehouse? I didn't really hear them. I just looked at those. How are they? I didn't oh. even walk in there. We we didn't. Scotty, you, you heard him, right? The treehouse, the treehouse audio were amazing. Uh really? They're just so beautiful. And they're also a field coil driver. So they removed the permanent magnet from the motor structure and they replace it with a, a coil that you have to power. And uh Kat was in there and she was spinning some special vinyl for us, some non-audio file stuff, but it was good recording. And we just had a great time. Lovely room. That's outstanding. That That's super cool. That is cool. They're um, crazy looking. I mean, it's like I was picturing like on either side of a fireplace, like a giant fireplace or something like on in the wall. And I'm like, it, it, the guys I was with, I'm like, I don't even care what they sound like. If I could afford something like that and put that in a giant great room or something, they, that's they're so cool looking. That's a lot of the stuff, like Suat said, about the horns. It's like, if you're buying cool. those things, the, think of the room you're putting those things in. You know, you're yeah, really it's concerned be a about the audio. Yeah. <laughs> that's you're going to have a stupid. lot of money. Yeah, yeah, stupid, <laughs> stupid money. And they were not the most <laughs> expensive speaker there by any no. you know, far means, by far really? stretch. Yeah, what what uh, what do you think was the most expensive single set of speakers? Anybody have a an idea? Of I what? think it was the horn because there's like 1.8 million. I don't Is think there's the... nothing else close to that level. Was it really 1.8 million for the horn system? Like 1.8 or 1.5? Just, just the speakers themselves. Yes, because just the, I was looking at just the CD drive, the CD with the transport is like 40 grand, oh, and then wow. each pre Probably. preamp is like 40 grand, and then. Everything is like thirty grand above. How much were the Aries Surat? Because those are pretty high end. I don't think it's anywhere close. Those they they are in the hundreds, but it's the low hundreds. Yeah, one one point anything million is a ridiculous yeah. number for speakers. I mean that room, that room is probably the most expensive room Expona has ever had. To be yeah, honest, I think yeah. so. In the three so, years I, I went, it. oh yeah, Griffin Co- Griffin Cotto forty. 400. I think they're four hundred forty to be exact, but. Who's kind of change at that point? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, so, so, that's why I didn't get them. The forty, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> so that forty, that ten percent, you know, broke the camel's back. Kill me. Uh, um, so, so, close. so okay. So let's uh, let's let's do a few few things that I always want to ask. Uh, uh, Borison or Rado? Borison. Borison. That's oh. not even a question, man. Oh, Borison dominating. Yeah. Um, what about? Uh, let's, let's, what are some other comparable things out there? Uh, There's Cansonic as well, which is one of the three, you know. 
Is Scansonic? Scansonic. Scansonic's like the cheaper version of uh, yeah. of Rado. Rado. Yeah, I don't even know how you say it correctly. Um, let's see. So, so Ray, give us, give us the opinion. I got to say, the Borsons just weren't doing it for me there. I just, <sighs> I'm glad because I don't have to buy them now. Sure. Yeah. Now, now you can. Now you can Check take a that path. off the I list. Will say, yeah, I will say that all the hype around the C ones, like they were good, but we went to. I just went to the X three room, and I, I still prefer the X three over the C one. So. So. What about uh, Magico or Estelon? Estelon. Mm, Estelon. This year, I would have to say Magico. I like Estelon, and I don't like I, the people over at Magico, to be honest with you. I, I, I'm, thinking, saying, I'm thinking. I like Magico. the whole combo, you know. Um. All right. So one thing I always also wanted to talk about, and we're we're going to close this off here pretty soon because I, I don't want to go super long tonight. But one thing that I was also super uh, super impressed by was. Ray's new segment that he did there that's up on his channel now where he uh he you know asked people questions about a piece of gear and if they could guess it they gave he gave them cold hard cash I only saw one of the videos and the guy was not able to guess it did we have any winners did anybody there, take money home there there's one more video that will come out um and no I only had I only had two people that that ended up playing um I had hoped that with the promise of cash more people would actually approach me um but that really wasn't the case uh but uh jay Sorry. jay lee from you know jay ziagi saw it and he, he really liked the concept and i told him he can play it next time we meet up so do know. you have any of the cards left oh yeah i have a ton of, i have a ton of them where are they at are they, are grab, they you want me to grab one i can just i would, I would love, I would love so for us hard. to play the game i would love so hard all right i'm gonna go so hard. Yeah. All like, <laughs> it's, it's i was crazy. trying i was trying not to lose all my money no the he, first question is like it's an amplifier, and then you're like, I, I changed it because Daniel said it was way too hard. But hold on, I'll go grab a card, and I'll be yeah, right back. Please, please do. And so, like the one I saw, it starts out, it's a DAC from the UK, and I'm I'm like I'm out already. Yeah, same. I'm, I was I'm, speechless. It doesn't. I no no additional number of clues will help me get it at this point. I I'm completely out. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, when it came on the screen, it's like, oh yeah, cord. Yeah, and I'm all like, I've heard of that before. <laughs> heard of it? Yeah, like that's what it is. <laughs> Wait, Joe, we got to would you to the, We got to listen to the chord DAC, and Michael Fremer came in the room, and oh. he's like, "So, what do you like more, digital or vinyl?" And I'm like, "Digital." I'm like, "Oh, I said the wrong thing to Michael Fremer." <laughs> well, I, I'm a digital guy too, so I'd have to be right there with you. So, you yo, Giles, which one would you pick, uh, Magic or Estelon? Magico. This Magical? Year. Um, yeah. I mean that that that's kind of like saying, you know, do you want a million dollars or a million dollars? Yeah, I'll take either one. They're both yeah, freaking awesome, yeah. right? Uh it's you know, it's kind of at that at that level. Uh um, did you guys go to the headphone thing? Because I was not interested this year. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> like one thing I never I go. talk about. Yeah, I there's like one, one brand I want to talk about this over there, but first I want to do uh Ray, Ray, Ray right. is laughing already, he's already laughing. I look right, at I know we're gonna lose. Pick, yeah. pick a card, boys. All the way on Third. your left hand side. Oh, All the way on the left hand side. This one. Yeah. Yeah. That All one's right. got my name on it. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. This one's this fail. One. This one's fail together. One. This might have to be like a recurring kind of thing. We got we, four we brains. Might have to do this on High Five Mafia every. Yeah. Every this week. is this is this is four 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 brains. So you know the chances of winning. Uh, but there's I'm not sending any of y'all PayPal. So. All right. Uh, <laughs> it's the term uh, brain better. <laughs> <laughs> we got four brains right. working together. Let's go. All right. We have we have a speaker. A speaker. This is made in Denmark. Cost twenty thousand dollars. Hands on it. Wait, calm down. <laughs> Sorry, you can't, just, you can't just blow all your guesses. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta yeah, be yeah. methodical about this. All right, all right. All right we got three brains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Den Denmark speaker twenty two thousand. Daniel, Zoo. come on, you better get it. Borison, I think it's the. X X sixes. X this guy must have read my card. That's what it is. No, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> I know must have read my cards while he was No, here. I know the price. I know the that price is, because Daniel was it. looking at them. No. There yeah. you go. That's Boom, awesome. There you go. That's <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Where's my twenty dollars? Right, Where's my twenty dollars? <laughs> one clue, one answer. Look at that. One clue, yeah. one answer. See, and Daniel said it was impossible, and he got Not it. Up. The one that I got was Griffin, and I didn't even know where they were from. So like right. when he said, I was like, 
Dan, Daniel, you pick the next one. Come on, we got to do it again. We'll All see right, we got another one. All right. Yeah. The one in the middle. The one in the very middle. Yeah. It's about the same, right? Okay. I bet. This is a turntable. Uh, I'm not going to guess it, this. It, it, <laughs> it, it is a belt drive. It is $40,000. Is it triangle art? No. Mm, then I don't know. Well, uh, uh, Vertoray. Vertoray. We'll give it. We'll give another hint. We'll give another hint. Okay. It comes with an external power supply, and the platter is two pieces made of aluminum. Is know. it VPI? It is not. Is it Audio Technica? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, there's no Audio Technica <laughs> on that level. Forty thousand dollars. <laughs> Daniel's like, there's only three, three game, three brains. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking Giles, man, come on, it's you, or y'all, all your guests. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the, I, Dave, I don't let, care let for turntables, man. I, I put SME? this in. It is not. Ooh. I searched. The, I, I searched that idea. stuff, and this is what Google gave us. How the do top search that. <laughs> No, I just, just did. I, I searched turntable, belt drive, forty thousand, uh, external power, uh, platter, two piece aluminum, and these are the top hits. So I've got an Audio Technica, I've got a uh, a. They know Audio Technica on that high. Yeah. No, seriously, they don't. I've got a uh, Oracle Audio Delphi Mark Seven. Um, I've got oh. a a Dayton Audio TT One BTW. <laughs> Like that is it. That is the one him. right there. No? Really? No. No. I was like, "What the hell?" G- Gemini <laughs> sound. Uh, All right, Ray. Give us the thing. Give uh, us yeah, the thing. We're know, gonna dude. be here forever. Is All it right. a PD one ninety one A? It was the Vertere RG one. I got the Vertere right. Yeah, but you got to get the whole thing. Oh, wow, that's bullshit, bro. I'm not gonna know freaking turntable oh, names. Right. If you ask me speakers, I'll get you any day of the year, but um when it comes to turntables or preamp, is it the one pre- in the access room? I don't know. It, if was, it was not that was the uh that was the um trans rotor uh Tobalone. And then and then before Suat, he was all like the X6. So I, I think he I think he got we that. Got one. Yeah, he got totally it. got that one. He would have made 20 bucks, and then somebody guessed uh Kronos. Uh, and I don't know what that was. I guess I don't even know what the Chronos is. That's a turntable. That's a turntable. That, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. a turntable. All right. Uh, one, one more. Last one. I, one I, more. I, this okay. fun. I like, we'll do, I like we'll do this. a speak. We'll do a speaker for for Daniel because he says he's got it. For That's Daniel, okay. he got the first one right. Yeah. He, All right. Yeah. Do it for somebody else. <laughs> All right. This is a speaker made in the USA. Forty five thousand five hundred MSRP. Uh, forty five thousand. Kef blades. No, that's not even work. made here, bro. It's not. I thought they were made in the USA. No. The blades. No, it's UK. Uh, all right, I don't know. brother, brother. <laughs> I think USA it's Macintosh. Daniel, Daniel, what's your guess? Macintosh. That's no, not even no. the brand. No idea. No. Made in America. That's specific. Made in America. That's got to be B and W. No, Bowers and <laughs> yes, we got three brains. We got three brains going. <laughs> God okay. damn it, Jeff. Yeah. He is, ah. he is, a, he is a three way design. Rockport yeah. Atria. It is not the Rockport. Uh, it features a three, it is a three way design, features two nine inch base drivers, and uses a Linquitz Riley crossover. Dyn Audio? No. No, no, no that's no. not American. No, yeah. No. I have no idea. We have two brains now. <laughs> I have two um, brains. Who makes any? Who, who makes speakers in the United States? Uh, Black Ocean Audio. No, forty-five thousand Black Ocean Audio, maybe in the future. <laughs> they're, they're, okay, I don't think people would be buying for that price. Okay, um, this this one, this is a this is a big hint. Uh, all right, you, this is a big hint. I'm going to throw you throw you a lifeline. It is a sealed design. The cabinet is made of aluminum. Oh, YG Magico or YG? It's YG. Yeah, YG. It's YG three way. YG or Magico? Yeah. Oh, Magico. So magical is magical because he looks yeah. And so what Cyphonic model? says uh <laughs> Magico S5? S5. Close S3. No, the S5s, yeah. the S5s are 70 grand. Yeah, yeah. Be the S3. S3. All right. We, it took Man, us a while. That's to tough. Get there. You gotta know your stuff. You do. There's so many brands too. Yeah. 
I got, I got the Boris. Hey, hey, I got the Boris. Hey, Jay's audio lab told didn't tell us. Well, he kind of told us after I guessed it, but he he told us what his next speaker was going to be. But he only gave me two clues about the speaker, and I thought about oh, it for a little bit, and I got it. I'm not going to leak it because that's disrespectful yes, to Jay. Don't leak it. But he only gave me two clues about the speaker that is now in his room and is his new reference. And there were a lot of guesses going around. I thought about it for a little bit, but I got it. This is motherfucker, it, bro, he got it so fast. Is it it wasn't even funny. It's yes, good. it's really good. It's really I'm good. I'm excited to I'm see excited. the video. Yeah, he just it's blew up over there. He gave the two thumbs up and he got some sparkles, but do it again. How do I do it? There it Whoa. is. I don't, then, I don't, he's got yeah, something cool that's doing it. My, my stuff won't do that. You're on a MacBook or an app, Apple product? Yeah. <laughs> All no, I do no, is no figures. That's crazy. <laughs> you, man. You gotta be yeah, as you cool play, as me. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like I'm the old dude in this group chat, you know? I don't know any <laughs> of the says magic leak things. It. No, Siphonic says leak <laughs> Jay leaked the Boris and launch video. Which is and I, yeah. it's fine. They invited him over. It, it is partly true. I don't know. I don't know if that was a special deal for him or what, but you know, he's got those kind of relationships, especially with like Boris yeah. and He's like super close with the next level hi fi guy. So, yeah, yeah. Just breathe, breathe, Siphonics. It's all right. Chill, <laughs> chill, bro. Here Drink we go. Here we go. We are now going to do the round robin shameless self promotion before we close up for the night. And, uh, Scotty, right. we're going to start with you. Sh same shameless self promotion. Oh, go. Okay. Make sure you go to the cheap audio man and watch his review on a $4 million speaker. I got a little bit of a drop in that video. Come on, nice. I'm super pumped. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. And then for everybody else, how do they find you? Come to Instagram at Audio Acoustic Engineering and YouTube Audio Acoustic Engineering or on my website, aaeaudio.com. Awesome. I got it all. On it. Oh, and then uh, on Instagram, Safe Jeff eighty one says, "How was the stark room? It was freaking amazing. How it was. I love yeah. it. I was in there working the whole it was, weekend. It was average, you know. It was, that, yeah. Well, the, there uh, was this one guy face. in that room that just wouldn't shut up. Yeah, he just talking like, about inspire this guy, man. Oh, so <laughs> it was. It was good. It was, all new stuff, and you know the the beta sevens at the seven hundred fifty dollar price point, pretty good." For for I was a bunch playing of Japanese music half of the time. I know I couldn't help it. Uh, and then man, those horn loaded uh, AMTs. It's man, I'm telling you, that's that's the way of the future for uh, for multi channel. Uh, anyway, uh, Ray, uh, shameless promotion. You can find me at at Hi Fi Turtle here on YouTube. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Uh, Hi Fi dot Turtle on Instagram. And if you go to my Instagram, you can go to the link in bio, find all the socials other stuff and ways to help support uh, and always appreciated when you do. Awesome. Awesome. Um, awesome. Awesome. DJ shameless live, promotion. Live show, uh, home theater experiences. My buddy, Steve and I, John's on a hiatus. There's usually three of us, uh, live show 5 PM Eastern time, Tuesdays, uh, Twitter at Brightside HD. Excuse me, website, brightsidehometheater.com, sights, sounds, the scenes, all that fun stuff. And we talk gear every now and then, too. <laughs> nice. Every once in a while. All right, Dan. Just search bro. base therapy. You'll find me. I'm big enough. <laughs> My videos are everywhere. <laughs> so oh, just, you if you can't find me, I'll just shameless. shameless. <laughs> oh. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm shaking all right, my own then, stuff. Uh, yeah. And then if you're here, you probably know about my channels already. Um, if you're watching via Instagram, mm. please come on over to YouTube and subscribe at Giles McCoy because that's where I make money at. I don't make anything on Instagram. Uh, love you, Instagram, but, man, you just don't pay. YouTube uh, hooks brother quick, up. Quick, quick thing. By the way, I'm just playing, guys. I, I'm not like this in real life. My ego is non-existent. I don't care if you make fun of me. I just I just think it's funny to exactly. troll, with, troll yeah. with these guys. So Don't think I'm a dick. If you meet me in real life, I'll say hi to you. you know, I'm not like special or whatever maybe special lead but <laughs> sorry Jeff. you're, you're definitely <laughs> you're definitely special you're, you're special to all of us in our heart um, <laughs> and uh you know uh three lives every week on tuesdays i've got uh, tech talk with giles yeah. mccoy which is what you're listening to now on sundays i have two live streams the first one is at two o'clock uh Mountain Time, uh, four o'clock Eastern, and that is the Hi-Fi Mafia. Three of the four are here. Ray, 
uh, Howard, Dan, and Giles. And then uh, two hours after that show is over, I've got Unbox Live with Giles and Drake, or with Drake and Giles. And uh, we uh, unbox Sheesh. some piece of gear that I have. Uh, it can be anything. We've had a robotic pool cleaner. We've had tower speakers. We've had AVRs. So who knows? You never know what's going to come up. <laughs> um, but uh, make sure you subscribe. Maybe subscribe. a wig. We're waiting could, for the wig. It could be a hair piece. Dude, one day I'm going to go to work and I'm going to have a full have hair piece. A, have you done a reboxing about something you didn't like? Reboxing. That, <laughs> that, 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 that would be pretty good. This one's going back. Now, <laughs> I, like, had, I, I did a... Uh, I unboxed what I thought was going to be a super damaged, um, the top of the line soundbar from Samsung. I mean, the box was absolutely, it was like mm. half ripped open. You could see inside of it, but turned out okay. Everything was great. No damage. Yo, guys, I don't want to be rude. I have to go. Okay. See ya. It was nice meeting you, DJ. You're, you're nice, cool. Sam. nice meeting you. <laughs> Take care. They're all like, take the orders, Dan. Take the <laughs> orders. You got to work. Work. Um, all right. Uh, he says he wouldn't say hi to me. It's got to be talking about Dan, Daniel. Yeah. See, I told you. And then that's right. So I did kind of toy. I, I, yeah, we, we won't get into all of that. That's the inside joke. And then I guess last, last question of the day before we sign off. Um, Tom uh, says, did you guys check out the Atoll Adam room? I spent quite a bit of time comparing to other rooms and I think they killed it. Anybody go in? I didn't go in. I, I, I didn't go in this one. year just because they, I don't think they had anything new or anything that I was interested in. Uh, but I've gone in pretty much every year I've gone, and it's always been a good experience. Cool. Right on. All right, folks, we're going to close it out. Um, uh, to my esteemed panel, thank you so much for spending your time with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, to all the viewers out there, thank you as well. To all, uh, looks like about 55,000 viewed just now. So uh, well done, everybody. <laughs> Remember, um, uh, uh, please take a look at uh, becoming a member of the family by a membership on YouTube. Always excited to see new members join. And you get all kind of cool perks, like getting called out on the show's life. I mean, if you want that love, that's how you get it. Um, and with that, we're going to go. <laughs> DJ's like, yeah, just, DJ's going to, he's looking to sign it up right now. He's all like, what's the top tier? I'm like 5,000 a month. I'm in. There you go. You can Dude, make fun of me some more. That that cool. top tier, I'll make videos for you. I mean, you, you you want me to make a video? Sure, I'll, I'll make you a video. Whatever. I give you fifteen minutes. Anything you want to hear about? Um, <laughs> all right, folks. Uh, again, thank you so much, and we will see you in the next one. Take care.